Thank you so much for choosing KTN Farmers TV and welcome to AgriTalk. As always, this is where we bring you key players in the industry to bring us information that will help you take your venture to another level. And today we're going to be talking about Martel's poultry farming and we are joined by Dr. Apollo Gishane. Yes. Yeah, he works with Kenchik and he will be telling us more about what he does and also about a training that is coming up very soon that is tailor-made for you for poultry farmers. Welcome to the show, Dr. Gishane. Thank you, Susan. Yes, so tell us more about yourself. Uh, so, like you said, my name is Dr. Paolo Gishane. Mm -hmm. I work for Kenchik here in Nairobi, a veterinarian by profession. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Kenchik is one, uh, Kenchik is East Africa's largest producer mm -hmm. of Dale chicks. Mm -hmm. uh, the business supplies farmers with uh, Dale chicks. Mm -hmm. We're talking of broilers, mm -hmm. layers, and the Kendro, which is a dual purpose breed. We also process chicken uh, that is sold to major retailers, supermarkets, mm -hmm. and households as well, mm -hmm. and also uh, go further and uh, process, uh, uh, we call them uh, further processed products like sausages, smokies, and all that. Okay, so let's talk about poultry farming, and as we all know, this is one of, of the most popular micro livestock farming in Kenya, if yeah. I can call it like that. So what are some of the factors that a farmer needs to put in place before they can actually just think about the, the venture? Yeah, poultry farming is a very important sector uh, in our economy, given that if you go to most of the major households, especially in the rural areas and also in the peri-urban areas, you'll find that every house household has one or two chickens or more. Yeah. So some of the basic factors that you need to look at when you are looking at commercial or subsistence uh, poultry farming are, mm -hmm. uh, one, selecting the right breed. Mm -hmm. So do I want to do broilers? Do I want to do layers? Mm -hmm. Do I want to do the improved kienyeji? Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to get that one uh, from the outright, that mm -hmm. this is what I want to rear. Okay. And in that regard, Kenchik has the broilers, mm -hmm. we have the layers, mm -hmm. we have the improved Kenyaji, the Kendro. Mm -hmm. And all these birds have been selected mm -hmm. to give you the best uh, meat yields. Mm -hmm. We're talking of uh, broilers maturing at uh, 35 days, mm -hmm. giving you an average life weight of uh, dressed carcass weight of 1.35 kilos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are looking at the commercial layers again with a high reverberity of around 93.5 percent again giving you uh, uh, good production over a period of 60 weeks or even more okay. and, and we have the kenbro again which is a dual purpose breed you can free range it uh, and again gives you uh, at least 2.5 kilos within three months yeah so you've mentioned quite a number of breeds uh, but I'm thinking, can yeah. anybody just venture into poultry farming? Where you live, the kind of climate, are those factors that one should consider? Yeah, the weather, the, weather, the environment mm -hmm. is very, very critical, uh, depending on uh, where you come from. But you can lay a poultry everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have poultry farmers in Rodwa, we have poultry uh, farmers in colder areas, like here in Rimuru, in Mount Kenya, Hayotishi areas. Mm -hmm. So, some of the parameters that you need to look at is making sure that your bird is comfortable. Mm -hmm. and that's why as part of what we'll be doing uh, within the, the next three days, we'll be doing a training on pottery, housing, design, depending on the environment on which uh, you want to rear the bird. Okay. Uh, the other key parameter uh, that we need to look at is uh, uh, your source of chicks. That is also something that is very, very critical for a farmer, who especially who is doing this one as a business. Because we want to get a bird that is going to uh, grow fast, that is going to give you maximum returns, may it be meat or eggs. We want a bird that uh, can withstand diseases, a bird that is vaccinated, a bird that will also uh, uh, be able to give you maximum returns. Oh, does the structure really... Uh do we use a, a common structure for all the breeds or do we have specific structure for the different breeds of birds that a farmer may decide to get? The structure is common. It's common. The structure that you want to rear your broilers, your layers, your kendros, it's all similar. Okay. You're looking at the same, same parameters in terms of ventilation, 
what could uh, differ is the stocking density. Because, uh, for instance, for a broiler, we are looking at uh, uh, one square feet per bird. For the layers, we are looking, especially in the depleter system, we are looking at two square feet. So, uh, assuming it's 1,000 square feet, it means you can only keep on 1,000 broilers. But in the same pottery house, you can keep 500 layers. So, what would really differ is the stocking densities. Yes. So, and uh, you know, production will always be determined by the kind of breed or, or the, maybe the parent stock that you have. Yeah. So, what are some of the advice that you can advise farmers on uh, the parent stock? Uh, farmers uh, need to be able to source their chicks from reputable hatcheries like Kenchik. In Kenchik, we have a model that we call farm to fork or farm to farm. And this is basically uh, a, a program where we have a traceability system. We can trace uh, every egg right from the breeder farm uh, all the way to the hatchery, all the way to the, uh, to the, to the broiler farm, and also be able to trace every cut of meat uh, within the whole uh, value chain. It also um, enables us to be able to trace that bird two generations back. That is up to the GP, the grandparent stock. So traceability is something that is very, very important for us. And that guarantees that we are able to give you the best quality chick to ensure maximum performance. Uh, okay. So that is the first... Uh that is the, uh, the first test that a farmer has to pass, yes. and that is getting a chick from a reputable farm. Exactly. But we've also had people who have gotten the chick from very reputable farms, yeah. and they have also experienced mortality cases. So what are some of the things, and especially when it comes to the brooding stage, yeah. that our farmers need to put into place to make sure that they have cut down on the risk of uh, losing chicks after acquiring them from sources like yours? Yeah. So what we do as can chick to support we offer technical services, we have a technical support, we have uh, qualified veterinarians like myself, we also have paraprofessionals in our uh, pet, uh, poultry centers all around the country, whereby we give technical support to farmers. Uh, we also do trainings, this is part of it, to be able to give farmers who are starters uh, away or let them, give them the knowledge on how they need to handle these birds. No, chicks at day one are like babies, yeah. so they need to be pampered, mm -hmm. you know, you need to give them adequate temperatures, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to give, to give them uh, good quality feed and water mm -hmm. for them to be able to survive mm -hmm. uh, at that particular stage. Mm -hmm. So we have had issues of mortalities coming due to yeah. chilling and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the things that farmers need to be able to or we help for them to understand why do we need to brood at a certain temperature? What happens when a chick uh, is exposed to, uh, to extreme temperatures? Do it be high or low? Mm -hmm. And we're able to uh, offer solutions for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and, and once now the farmer has the chicks, what is the feeding uh, plan that our farmers need to put into place just to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, the chick at the stage of when it is still very small, or we call it their chicks in yeah, their chicks, So yes. what kind of feeds are we looking at here just to make sure that they are getting their, their required nutrients? Now, uh, the feed will differ depending on the product that you have. Mm -hmm. For broilers, you start mm -hmm. off your chicks with uh, mm -hmm. what we call the broiler starter. Uh, and the birds will feed on the broiler starter for, for the first 10 days. Yeah. Then they transition to what we call broiler grower parrots mm -hmm. uh, for another up to the 25. Mm -hmm. And from there on till the uh, point of slaughter, looking at 35 days, uh, they are fed on what we call uh, broiler finisher uh, parrots. Mm -hmm. For the layers, we, the scenario is the same. We are talking of uh, chick mash, mm -hmm. chick and duck mash for the first uh, two months from the ninth week till point of lay okay. which is uh, 18 weeks 18 weeks is equivalent to four and a half months mm -hmm. they are fed on what we call the growers mash mm -hmm. and uh, from then onwards mm -hmm. that is from the onset of lay till the point of depression or when you decide to uh, to sell that bird as an next layer 
to feed on layers mash. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll get into the nitty gritties of the amount of feed that you need to feed and all that yeah. in the training uh, in the next few so, weeks. And, and I hope our farmers are listening to this, that w the conversation we are having here is just a tip of the iceberg exactly. of what they will uh, be finding getting from the training. So yeah. you shouldn't miss, you should create time and attend that training. So let's talk about feeds. And we've had many farmers say that 70% of their production cost goes to feed. Yeah. What are some of the substitutes maybe they can uh, use together with the commercial feed just to make sure they're able to subsidize on this on the on the cost? Uh, right to feed, mm -hmm. feed uh, amounts to 70% or even more yeah. the cost of poultry production. Mm -hmm. Right now, feed is expensive in Kenya. And this is because most of the raw materials that are used to make feed uh, either uh, too expensive to buy or to produce, or some of them have to be imported. And uh, for the broilers and the layers, we have farmers, uh, most of the layers, we have farmers doing on formulations, uh, supported by companies like Unga Farm Care. Uh, they offer uh, support on farmers who want to do on formulations and uh, that is one way of lowering the feed costs. Mm -hmm. For the broilers, uh, the best feed to give the broilers is the commercial feed. Okay. It's quite uh, difficult to get that balance mm -hmm. when you formulate at the farm to be able to feed your broilers. Mm -hmm. So what we urge our customers is to go for fugo feed, which is the best mm -hmm. that we use in our farms to be able to uh, promote or to be able to feed their broilers. Okay. Now, for the dual purpose breed, mm -hmm. there's a leeway because with the dual purpose breed, uh, it's a bird that can, uh, can be supplemented. Yeah. So we are looking at a bare minimum ration mm -hmm. in a day mm -hmm. of the Kenyaji feed, mm -hmm. uh, which is available in uh, outreps and you can now supplement them with kitchen waste, uh, vegetables. You can even actually, uh, if you do have space, allow them to free range. And that again uh, lowers uh, uh, your feed costs. Okay, so for the broilers and the layers, it's strictly a farmer has to stick with the commercial, commercial feed as prescribed yes. by you or the other sources of information yeah. out there. However, those who want to explore in making their own formulations, mm -hmm. companies like Fugo have products that can uh, be tailor-made for them and they can be uh, taken through on how they can uh, explore that as an opportunity or as a way of uh, doing business. And yeah. is, it, um, is it recommended that farmers use the, those formulas? Because we've been to farms where farmers, I think they did the mixing with the wrong ratios and uh, they didn't get the results they expected. Yes. So in such a case, what would you tell the farmers? Uh, well, if you're going to do on formulation, mm -hmm. get, it from, uh, get it right from the start. Mm -hmm. Consult a uh, nutritionist who know what it is that is needed source uh, source for the right room raw materials, test them, because one of the big challenges is that you might want to formulate your own feed and use the wrong material yeah, or sure. use contaminated raw materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and like we say, garbage in is garbage out. Sure. So if you start off wrong, using mm -hmm. the raw materials, you get the wrong feed, you get uh, feed that is contaminated, mm -hmm and eventually that will resort to this uh, loss. Because actually we've had even cases where people yeah. get consignment. Yes. And in this particular case, a, a farmer got a consignment. I think it was contaminated. So he ended up killing all his flock. Yeah. And to make the matter worse, uh, he also did us a few supply to family and friends, people who usually uh, get feed from him. Yeah, so I think the, the most uh, advisable thing is just then to stick the, to the right formulas. The right formulas. Or just use the commercial, the commercial feed, feed as prescribed. And if you're going that way on formulating your own feed, mm -hmm. consult the experts. Mm -hmm. They can advise and be able to guide you on the best way, where to source your premix and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, take us, through, take us through the biosecurity measures. Uh, biosecurity in itself is a huge scope of things that you need to do uh, in your poultry production system to be able to ensure that uh, uh, you want to eliminate disease mm -hmm. or in this particular instance you want to prevent diseases coming into your poultry farm. 
So biosecurity will encompass a lot of things, right from uh, one, where you locate your farm. That is one aspect of biosecurity. You want to locate your farm in a place whereby you don't have so many uh, pottery uh, houses around. You know, you want a, to have your birds uh, or your pottery house uh, constructed in such a way that it's rodent proof. Yeah. There's no uh, wild birds as well because they are also disturbers of diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, measures to ensure that you do proper crane down. Yeah. Crane down is uh, how you clean your house. Mm -hmm. That is after one crop yeah. before you bring in another batch of birds. Mm -hmm. You need to clean your house very well yeah. using water at a high pressure. Mm -hmm. You also need to disinfect your house. Mm -hmm. You need to use foot birds again. Mm -hmm. Uh, before we get into our pottery houses. Mm -hmm. We need to fence our pottery houses or the environment in which the birds are within mm -hmm. to prevent entry of uh, other domestic animals, wild animals as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to also make sure that uh, our birds again are vaccinated mm -hmm. and vaccinated in the right manner. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge scope of things that will now uh, give you uh, a good uh, disease control uh, or disease management system uh, for your flock. So let's talk about the deep litter uh, farming uh, system and then the, we have the battery cage. Which one would you advise farmers to go for? Uh, personally, I'll go for the deep litter system mm -hmm. because the deep litter system, uh, as Kentik, let me start with that, we are advocates of good husbandry system yeah. and part of that is animal welfare. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, of the one of the uh, one of the of the key elements mm -hmm. of animal welfare is uh, ensuring that birds are able to express their natural behavior, natural, natural behavior, mm -hmm. and that means the birds need to move around. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to uh, have space. Mm -hmm. So, uh, deep litter system will allow that. As long as you don't overstock or you're using the right stock density, your birds are comfortable. Mm -hmm. So uh, that in itself uh, 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 promotes or makes me say that I would, I would go for the deep litter system. So you find that deep litter system is more friendly, it's, it's, it's more a more friendly friendlier yeah. environment for the chicken. Yes. Okay, we will be coming back after a short break. We need to discuss about the, uh, the battery cage system which of course has a lot of controversy in terms of the, yes. the rights, the, yeah. the animal rights uh, standards, which some people feel like they are compromised in that system. So we're gonna be taking a short commercial break and don't go too far. We will be back in a short while.